Okay guys, we are nearing the end of the Peregrine. The game is frustrating at points, but other than that it's pretty cool. I like the story behind it. Okay, uh, even though the those puzzle, the puzzles are kind of like moving back and forth constantly. This is how they are constructed. I mean, and I am not the biggest fan of this solution. The path ahead climbs to the heavens. Abbey, two giant suns cast a duel of light and shadow across the summit's swirling clouds. Mm -hmm. I wonder if, if I can move beyond the laser part here to go further beyond because I need the the froggy froggy frog froggy the frog face okay it didn't notice me I don't know how it's possible I don't know if it's supposed to be possible but it didn't notice me mm, I think that I'm not supposed to be here yet well the worst case scenario I'm gonna uh, die here and maybe respawn somewhere else okay. so let's give it a go mm. can i see Maybe I don't need this guy yet. Okay. Let's move the owl bear first. Mm -hmm. And now I can put the stone here and it will act as a counterbalance for this. Okay. Cool, cool. This... Okay, and he chose to go to a different crystal this time. So I was about to praise the crystal mechanic that the guys will... that the owl bear will come over here and he will be closer to this stone that I need most probably in the future. But he didn't. So the crystal is here is completely useless. So, why would I need this? Let's put it here for a second. And let's take over this guy because I think that he has to push or like slam this yes no 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 oof okay let's see because i need This is okay, so I need both of them. Maybe not not both of them, but I need this guy to move the stone. Move the stone over here. Ok, 
Okay, and now I need the frog dude. Okay, I think that I figured it out because I need this guy. Maybe I need this guy to headbutt this thing and it will move the crystal to the frog. But my question is, how is this frog gonna put, uh, okay, it's not gonna do it, I need to move the stone. I fell through the floor again? No, not this time. Cool. This one here. Yes, and now. Get over here. Get over here. Yep, again. No, no. Oh, okay. He managed either way to find this. Amitai. She sounds more and more like exhausted each time we hear her. So many trials and yet courage unfailing. I am close, Amitai. The summit nears. All around you is darkness. But still, what remains of your failing mind swipes at salvation. Perhaps you may yet succeed. Abby returns the comms unit to her satchel. Only a few paces lie between her and the cloudy summit. Yep, we are nearing till the end. Uh, okay, I need I need the the owl bear. Dude, I need you. <laughs> I died, okay. Uh, I was not expecting that. Maybe I need the guy first, here. Can I even be here? Okay. Barely. Okay, I can barely hide behind this wall here. Cool. the button I don't need you I hope this is the last time I I need to go like back and forth between the screens because now I have all three guys in place Okay, there's a second button here. But why would I need this? Or this stone? Or those just like red herrings? Um. 
Abby's shallow breath quickens as she looks for a way to progress. Within her mind, the dark floods rise further still. Visions flicker in the darkness against the tide's steady swell. Okay, I think that I have to bring the... the bull. I need to bring the bull over there. Is he gonna detect? No, I need to get... Ah, god damn it. This thing. Frog. Yes, move here. Can you lick the button? No, you can't. Can I possess you? I can. Smash this thing. Okay. And now it's open. How do I open this? I thought it's I thought that the bull got stuck. I would be so annoyed. What the actual How am I supposed to get this dude over there do I need to punch it with my I don't see it Maybe if I move the stone? No, I can't move this one. I can't move this one. Yeah, this one j is locked in place. I cannot remove it. something a little bit far ahead. Okay, that was that easy. Just like that. Final channel is the name of this of the achievement I just got. Pick this stone. And waddle on forward. Pick this stone. And put it here. And now stand on this button here. But we all know that it's not gonna be open for a very long time because I need to move it and then he will just go go away. Okay. Yeah. 
And now this goes here. And now it opens. No, no, I went directly up and that is death. An incoming signal. The source is unfamiliar to Abby. Accepting it, she is startled by a strange voice. I only wanted to keep you close. Forgive me. Who? No, it cannot be. Listen to my voice, Abby. I... I... I can't recall anything. Look in your pack. There is a kernel, a seed. I put it there for this moment. The panic in the stranger's voice scares her. Confused, she searches her pack for that of which she speaks. Her hand fumbles upon the tree carving she found earlier. As she studies it, the shadows that had settled within her mind begin to lift. Images slowly return. She remembers a place that felt safe. A home. It... It's working. It worked for now, my child, but you cannot deny the gods their toll forever. You near a place from which you may not return. It is what I have always feared most. I'll fight it a little longer. Abby resumes her march. In her palm, she holds tightly the memento from her father. The trinket is now her only anchor for what is most precious inside. She glances at it repeatedly as she walks. Okay. So the closer I am to things, the less I remember. And I wonder why there is no like young guy contacting me. Only my like my father and Amit Amitya. This monolith is different. No words adorn the solemn slab. And yet, like the others, the form is similarly incomplete. At its center is a circular hollow. Running her hand across the cold stone, Abby finally understands. This is the wound she must repair. The toll has taken almost everything from me. All that remains is a plea. A gesture of atonement. The slab before her is an altar, expectant of her offering. She joins together the shattered pieces of Liszt's fallen god remains from Isaac's pack. Squinting into the blinding light of the cloudless summit, Abby places her offering upon the altar. I am here to beg vengeful gods to restore this ravaged land back to life. Suddenly, the core of the Oblian orb swirls. Word by word, a script emerges upon the monolith's surface, as if from within the rock itself. Abby trembles as she reads the emerging text. The vengeful rage of the gods finally exhausts its purpose. Their condition is met. The humans acquiesce to the god law they had tried to evade. The Oblian, eternity, belongs not to them. The atonement is a promise. A promise not to run, but to face that which pushes at their backs. That precious epiphany, lost for so long, has been refound. The gods are satisfied. Those who master the lesson of loss can be trusted with that which is precious. She pauses for a second, her feverish mind reeling from the monolith's words. With a deep breath, she continues. But the gods do not restore the world which has been lost. They decide that now the humans shall make their own world. Only then would they understand its true value. The guardians fall back, and the toll upon their humans' faculties is lifted. The ruin is theirs to make home again. The script momentarily appears complete. Suddenly, a few final lines emerge. The gods decide that she, 
who delivered the atonement will live on as a reminder. What she has given will never be returned. When reunited with those left behind, she will know neither their faces nor their names. For the remainder of her days, she will clutch a small wooden object in her palm, knowing only that it had saved her once. It would not do so again. Yeah, so she saved the entire like population by sacrificing her memories. I believe I called it. Not all it. that passes leaves its secrets waiting to be discovered inside a black box. But if those who yielded these ruins had done so, what would we have found inside? Oblion, the last undiscovered element, was finally isolated in 2191. As had been predicted, it possessed unique properties. Not only could it arrest cell decay in most living organisms, raising the prospect of limitless lifespans, in some, it also enhanced the neural networks for empathetic interaction with other living creatures, giving basic telekinetic control over simple animals. Uriah Joyce, upon its discovery, famously remarked, only Oblion separated mankind from the gods until now. But the planet's reserve was finite, just enough to sow the seeds of ruin. The search for more turned to the heavens. The planet's shielding moon, List, contained further reserves. Competition turned to conflict. The extraction effort, known as the Lazarus Project, was a catastrophe. Blasting triggered a chain reaction, fissuring the moon into millions of fragments. List's shattered remains were pulled in by the human planet's gravity, causing an apocalyptic bombardment. List's position was the cosmic accident that offered the humans their chance of life. Without it, they were directly exposed to their galaxy's twin suns, Or and Ot, forces far beyond their control. Solar radiation ravaged their minds, taking all knowledge and memory from them. The Guardians, a fierce species existing on list for millennia, also lost their hope. Revenge was their only solace. Only a few primitive human collectives endured, taking shelter in deep cave formations known as the Enclaves. In the end, no living thing breaks free from the silent black hole pull of death's nothing. From a life's first second, its event horizon already lies behind it. The Oblion was the universe's most dangerous gift, a false mirage of escape from the sorrows of loss. The epitaph of a civilization cannot easily be contained in a few short words. Shortly before his death, Uriah Joyce remarked, forgetting the pain of loss, we lost sight of what is most precious. Those who follow us will have to relearn the lesson. Okay. So I kind of called it, but not, not exactly in the same words. Um, yeah, that was Peregrine. The game is cool. I really like the soundtrack. I really like the the voice acting. It's extremely solid. It's like one of the best I, I heard and in years the the style is very unique but as i mentioned before the puzzles are, are fine they are not not hard not easy they are just like in a perfect spot some of them are frustrating but the frustration comes from being forced to repeat your steps over and over and over again and this is kind of frustrating especially when the animation of switching between screens takes so long I believe that the game could be like half an hour, uh, half an hour shorter, if it wasn't for the for the screen, screen transitions. I understand that that was the plan. Uh, the game is uh, entirely is kind of more of a laid back experience, so there's no more 
there's no rush in discovering things. I liked it. It's it wasn't bad. It wasn't just it, it wasn't amazing, but it was just fine. It was a fine short adventure for like two and a half hours, maybe three and a half hours. Yeah, that was Peregrin. And those are all my thoughts on it. I hope you enjoyed watching it. And I will see you in the next gameplay. Bye bye.